Hey everyone, Cassie Draws here and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to paint a snow leopard's eye or in general just a blue animal eye. I hope you find today's video helpful and let's go ahead and get started. So the first step when painting blue eyes is we're going to want to go ahead and fill in the entire base layer of this eyeball right away. And so what I've done is I've looked at my reference and I found a really nice middle tone blue that will allow me to both highlight and shadow these eyes with as many layers as I'm going to need further on in the painting. So I don't want to be too heavily weighted to one side. So I don't want something that is very light and I don't want something that is too dark that I have a really hard time putting in these layers. Now I will say make sure that your base layer is nice and opaque so you're using a lot of paint here. Just filling in this entire area with whatever size and shape brush that you prefer and just giving us a really nice base to work from. Once your base layer has dried completely, we can go ahead now and start adding in the shadow elements of this eyeball. Now with my eyes and specifically the shadow element, I will normally have five to six layers of shadow within one eye. So I really like to layer these on. I like to use the properties of acrylic to its advantage. So the fast dry time and the excellent ability to layer and layer quickly. And so I will basically every time my brush leaves the camera, off camera to my palette paper, I am mixing a new color or a new variation of a color. So I am adding in some phthalo blue, I'm adding in some Mars black, some titanium white. I am just slightly adjusting this shadow tone darker, darker, darker every single time you see my hand leave the canvas. So make sure you are getting some nice variations in your colors and your darkness and really just following these beautiful patterns and sort of textures that these eyes have. Once your shadow layers have dried, we can go ahead now and start working on the finer details now. So I'm taking my triple zero round brush or what I call my detailer and I'm just going in and I'm adding in some of these spider like webs or veins within these eyes and I want them to have texture. I want them to look real. And so by adding these tiny little lines throughout, I find that it really does bump up the realism quite a lot and makes this eye much more round and 3D. And you can see here that I'm also adding in some slight glazes on top of this as well. So instead of mixing these colors all over again, if I think that an area needs to be a little bit darker or has to have a little bit more of a layer or texture to it, I will just come in with a light glaze and do that as well. So be sure to follow your reference, really look at this eye and see what textures are there. Are there some color shifts? Are there some light veins or sort of, and that's not scientific at all, but veins or this sort of spider-like area, where are those? And is there anything else that I need to be paying attention to during this sort of detail stage. So once those layers have dried, we can go ahead now and start to add in the catch light to our subject. Now the catch light, in my opinion, is arguably the most important and the most enjoyable part of any eye painting or any portrait work for that matter. And up until now, our eyes have looked a little bit lifeless. They, yes, have really beautiful colors and, you know, they look like a snow leopard's eye, but it's only until you add this catch light that you really start to see the personality and the feeling or mood of your subject and this animal. So what I like to do is I will start off with my triple zero round, so my detailer brush, and I will go in with a really nice cool gray tone. So I'll add in a little bit of blue to a nice gray color just to get a nice base to work from. Very similar to the steps that we took in the very beginning with the base layers. Once I have all of those areas blocked in where I can see these catch lights are, I'm going to lighten this color every so often about 10 to 15% with titanium white. I don't want to jump right into this catch light with titanium white. I want it to have a really nice gradient and a really nice effect to it. I don't want it to be too strong right off the bat. I really want to work this in layers. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this uh, titanium white into my color mixture a little bit at a time until I get to the part where I feel it is light enough and matches my reference as best as possible. 
The last step in our eye painting is we're going to want to add in the details that often I find are overlooked or forgotten about. And that is going to be as an example, adding in some light little eyelashes on top of this catch light where the light is reflecting from. A lot of times you will get some really cool reflections in your subject. So whether it be the photographer taking the picture may show up in the catch light or it could be some eyelashes. I went ahead and added those in over top for just an extra little sprinkle of realism. And the last part I like to do kind of towards the end is to add in some of the texture or the variation in color or highlight to the rubbery part of the eye. So a lot of times you will actually get some of the catch light added in to this area as well. So it is not just a straight Mars black burnt umber color. It often has a little bit of a gray variation or even some spot like white highlights as well. So I'm taking a much lighter color and just blocking in where I can see all of these highlight elements and just being very selective of where I put these. So I don't want to go too heavy handed with this. Otherwise, the bottom of the snow leopard's eye is going to look a little blue. So I'm just being very selective, adding in these little highlights where I see them in my reference. And if you find that you go a little bit too far with these highlights, you can always come in with a black glaze or you can always use just your Mars black and burnt umber and kind of tone that down a little. Once the left hand side eye is completed, we can go ahead now and rinse and repeat these steps on the canvas right hand side. Now I recommend just something that I've learned myself and that works for me is to complete the eyes right away at the beginning of your portrait. And the reason being is for me, I find it sets the mood and the tone and kind of what to expect with the rest of the portrait right off the bat. The eyes are the window to the soul, whether it is a human portrait or a pet portrait, wildlife portrait, it doesn't matter. The eyes are the first thing that we see when we look at a painting, most times. Of course, there's those exceptions, um, and of course, there's many different styles of art, but in this space, for me personally, I have always been drawn to the eyes of the subject, and so I want to make sure that they are the most lifelike and realistic and, of course, match my reference, especially with pets, as best as possible. So I get it out of the way, I kind of set the tone for the painting, and then I just kind of enjoy the rest of the ride. Wherever the painting takes me, I know that I have a really solid foundation and a really great base to work from when those eyes are completed. All right, and there you have it. There are our finished blue eyes that you can see here on my snow leopard, Laramar. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I had an absolute blast making it. And let me know down in the comments below future videos that you would like me to cover. Big shout out and thank you to our channel sponsors, Chart Pack, Grumbacker, and Molotov for sponsoring today's video. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's content and hit the bell to be notified when I upload next. Thank you all so much for your support and thank Thank you for joining our family. We are 4,000 strong and I cannot believe it. Thank you guys so much and I will see you in the next video.